You are now watching On Point, a news and public affairs show from California State University, Northridge. Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm your host, Robert Saints, and today we will be accompanied by two guests who will give us a slight insight on some of our issues surrounding homelessness. Joining us today is Director of Hope, the Mission, Marty de la Cruz and Martin Munoz, who was previously unhoused. Um, I want to thank both of you guys for being here today and for um, taking the time to um, speak to us about the homeless situation in Los Angeles. So let me start with uh, Ms. De La Cruz. Ms. De La Cruz, um, basically I want to start off by asking you the first question. How long have you been in social services? Um, compiled together, I've been in homeless services about six years. Six years, okay. Um, out, of the out of the many career prospects that you could look into, why the homeless, why homeless services? Because I give people hope. Okay. I give people a chance to feel like they're human again, mm -hmm. like they have value. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty neat. It's pretty in uh, interesting. You're looking at it from a humanistic point of view. Of course. Which I think is, is pretty, pretty good. Okay. Um, describe your current position at your uh, most recent job and your job responsibilities at the Hope of the Mission Center. So I am currently the Director of Access and Engagement, and what that entails is overseeing um, our Access Center in Van Nuys, our Navigation Center in North Hollywood, and our three outreach teams that are in different districts of the Valley. So the Access Center and Navigation Center are brick and mortar buildings that people can come in seeking services. Um, the Access Center has a department called Problem Solving, which also helps people that are at imminent risk of becoming homeless to help them provide, help provide them with a one-time solution if they can continue to sustain their unit or if they need help, whether it's paying their rent or fixing their car, we can also help with that. So it's more of a preventative service and it also helps when people have found a unit and need help with the first month's rent and um, their deposit. The Navigation Center also has a job center, so we help people find employment, prepare for employment, provide clothing when the funding is available, and it also has a storage facility where people can store their items, which is really critical for those who are experiencing homelessness because you don't have anywhere to store your items. Items are stolen from you all the time. So this is something that you can have, that you know it's safe, that nobody's going to get into. Um, our outreach teams are a little different. They provide the same services as far as referrals, interactions, snacks, and um, they actually go out to the encampments. They go and reach the people and provide the services there. Great. We're going to talk a little bit more once we get a little bit more in depth in, in the conversation. But I also wanted to touch bases with Martin a little bit more. So, Martin, it is my understanding that you were homeless at one point. Yes. Okay. So, talk to me a little bit of, about the experience of, of dealing with with homelessness and if you were able to reach to homeless services yourself. Yeah, I was like about three years homeless, mm -hmm. sleeping so, in my car. Okay. Okay, and how did you get to that point? How did you get to the to the point of, of not having a, a permanent ruling for yourself? Uh, mm -hmm. just, but it was hard, you know. Like, it was hard, so yeah. you end up losing a job? Did you end up, uh, you know, detaching from family? Our what family. Took place? What, what transpired in your life that got you to that point? Uh, my mom got, a, she went, she got old timers. Okay, okay, okay. So, you know, it's, it's a delight to me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was sleeping in my car for like okay. three years. Okay, so that experience, I'm assuming that it was pretty, pretty tough for oh, yeah. you at any given point. Yeah. Okay. So, so the so press. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and how were you managing to take care of, of your personal well-being as you were homeless? Where would you shower? You know, how would you survive on a daily basis? I used to go to an Echo Park pool. Okay. Showers or so skid roll. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and, and today, um, retroactively looking at your life, would you say that um, today you are at a much better place than oh, you yeah. were previously at? Oh, yeah. Okay. Got a uh, brand new apartment. Okay, okay. You know, so nice. you're back into housing services oh, yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. How did you get there? 
Uh, I went, was going to uh, this church on Sunset, I think. Okay. So they okay. helped me out. Right there. Okay. Okay. They got me a place. Yeah. Okay. So your experience was a little bit, a little bit uh, on the on the side of you being proactive yeah. and trying to seek services in the community mm -hmm. and trying to do for yourself. Yeah. Okay. What were some of the challenges that you saw as you were navigating through through services? Mm, there was a lot of like a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that was going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, when was the first time you ever became homeless? You said three years ago? Uh, 2016, I think around 2016. Okay, okay. And the first night that you, the first night that you were dealing with, with homelessness, where did you spend the night? How was that for you? It was bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, it was a bad area. Mm -hmm. Too many drugs around and mm -hmm. people stealing stuff. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what do you see yourself uh, in terms of accessing services? Do you honestly believe that there's companies out there or agencies who would always work on your best interests oh, yes. when it comes to looking for services? Yeah, so that, okay. there's a lot of places to okay. go. Okay, okay. So, in what type of services they gave you? Just the housing portion itself? And or? they give me like appliance, you know, for my mm -hmm. apartment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about for your for your own personal human survival? What did you do? Did you apply for CalFresh? Yes. Any kind of support? Uh, CalFresh and GR, whatever that you know. Okay. Okay. So that that's that's pretty interesting and pretty in line for for some of our viewers out mm -hmm. there who um, are actually facing the same situation that you know many people face um, in in California mm -hmm. with the very high cost of daily living. You know, rental payments on a monthly yeah. basis are pretty expensive in California. So um, I'm getting back to uh, Ms. De La Cruz. So Ms. De La Cruz, I also wanted to ask um, in terms of. What would you say would be the causes that um, pushes an individual towards homelessness? It could be anything. Mm -hmm. It could be anything from a spouse passing away, mm -hmm. um, a family member getting sick, mm -hmm. your car breaking down, mm -hmm. you getting sick, your child getting sick. Mm -hmm. It could be trauma. It could be addiction. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. Homelessness doesn't have a bias. Okay. So uh, thank you for sharing, you know, it, it's pretty valuable to understand, you know, what's going on in the community. Um, I, I want to thank you guys for, for being here today. Um, right now we'll take a quick break, but when we return, we'll get deeper into the topic of homelessness. Okay. I tell my son, I love you every single day. Hello, and welcome back to One Point. We now continue our discussion on the topic of homelessness with Marie de la Cruz, who works at a homeless shelter. Thank you so much for coming back, Marie. Um, so I just wanted to conduct a couple follow-up questions in terms of you know what we have previously spoken about. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, I think we left off in the portion where we were talking about the issues that you believe affect the homeless community as of today. What would you say are those some of those issues? I mean, starting from not having the basic necessities. I mean, what I feel should be basic human rights is access to a running shower, running water, a toilet, somewhere where you don't have to feel embarrassed or nowadays feel that you're going to be filmed on TikTok because you're trying to use the restroom because you don't have a facility to go to. You know, um, then there's the huge issue is shelter, safety. Safety being one of the top things that our people experiencing homelessness deal with on a day-to-day, -day, minute by minute. Every time that they turn around, they could be assaulted, they could be aggravated, they could be insulted. They, it's, it's really, really hard to see all the basic necessities that our people experiencing homelessness, homelessness do not have at their disposal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm assuming that that's um, on the individual level. But if I wanted to go ahead and look into the social portion, if I wanted to look into the um, uh, systematic portion and the social portion of, of things, what would you say today would be the biggest concerns that we are facing as, as a community, as a society, in terms of dealing with the homeless uh, crisis? Socially, mm -hmm. being homeless, you're looked down upon. Mm -hmm. You're looked as if you're you're not even human anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Everybody wants to turn a blind eye. Everybody wants their homeless people out of their community, um, but aren't really willing to extend an olive branch and say, you know what, let's consider this, you know, this area, this vacant lot. Let's talk to the community about possibly building a homeless shelter where those who are experiencing homeless can have a safe place to lay their head. Mm -hmm. Systematically, I mean, if we look at just rent prices, if we were just to focus on that, it's absolutely ridiculous, the rent prices. Mm -hmm. I mean, singles that don't even have a bedroom, there's, you know, 17, 1800. And when you're looking at the areas that, you know, they're in, sometimes they're not in the safest neighborhood and people are so okay with that. Oh, well, at least it's, a place to lay your head. And while yes, that is true, but everybody should be entitled to safety as well. Correct, correct, that's pretty insightful. Now on that note, I wanna continue to further uh, go deep into the conversation in terms of uh, do we have a system that is working for our people? Or do we need to change or adjust the system to continue reaching out to all of those homeless individuals? because I believe that a couple of years ago, Proposition H infused so much money into the system, yet today we have 75,000 individuals in LA County per night who are homeless. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, where is the funding going to? How are agencies being able to ensure that clients are getting the services they want, but ultimately what they need? So there's a, it's supply versus demand, right? The amount of shelter beds is not enough for those that are experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. And what we're really not taking into account, and although yes, um, Measure H has been wonderful, mm -hmm. right? And it has provided and opened doors for many more shelter beds, many more services, because it's not just shelter beds. Mm -hmm. It's services, you know, it's connecting people to the things that they need, mental health, you know, health services, um, getting document ready, things like that. Um, but if we really look at it, inflation prices continue to grow. People are having to make decisions whether they can fix their car or they can go to work. They can fix their car or pay their rent, pay a light bill or pay their rent. These are just everyday situations on top of everything else, right, that can happen. These are everyday situations that are happening continuously to more and more people. Mm -hmm. There's people that are working two or three jobs and still not making ends meet. Mm -hmm. So we have to really focus our attention on that, not just the fact that, oh, there's just so many homeless people, mm -hmm. right? Providing more services in homelessness, providing more shelter beds, that opens up a door to not only service those who are experiencing homelessness, but it also opens up employment opportunities for those who are in need of a job. Very insightful information for all of our viewers. I wanted to continue uh, on the conversation regarding engagement, mm -hmm. because I honestly believe that you're doing a great job in terms of, of engagement. But talk to me about the engagement portion. Are you talking to other community partners, to other community agencies, to make sure those clients are getting the services they need? What is the engagement portion? Mandatory. Okay. That is mandatory. Okay. In this field, that is, that's the gold. Okay. Right? Okay. Because some agencies, we may not have the correct services. Like if somebody needs a higher level of care, mm -hmm. right? Whatever that may look like, whether it's a, a mental challenge or it's a physical challenge, mm -hmm. having those, those people in a certain department or a certain agency that you can contact, right? Mm -hmm. And say, hey, this is the situation. Can you guide me on what I need to do or where I can, you know, have them go? That is, how we get people seen, how we get people connected to services and sending, instead of sending them to just knock on a door. 
Thank you, Ms. De La Cruz, for the insightful information that you have provided to us and to our viewers. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be joined by uh, an individual who has experienced homelessness and struggles of being uh, unhoused. Uh, you're watching On Point. I'm an actor in an ad reminding you that if you're high, just don't drive. Welcome back. I am Robert Saints. Um, and we're back with, uh, with, a, with a man who has experience and over, um, um, expertise over, uh, overcoming the experience of homelessness. His name is Martin Munoz. Martin Munoz will speak to us in regards to his homeless experience. So, Martin, thank you so much for being back with us. So, basically, what I wanted to ask you would be just maybe to talk to us about a little bit more in depth about your experience in terms of, of you know, you being homeless for quite some time. I believe that at the very beginning of our show, you mentioned that you were homeless for three years. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, so, um, you know, what was the hardest portion in those three years to overcome as you were facing homelessness? Like taking showers, like looking for showers, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. being, you know, parked sometimes mm -hmm. in a safe place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, were you ever harassed oh, yeah. by the police? Oh were yeah. Were you ever, um, you know, attacked? Because I do, I, I do understand that many of our homeless individuals get attacked either by other homeless individuals or they they easily get harassed by the police and law enforcement. Yes. Was that a part of your experience? Yeah, a lot. Okay. There was okay. a lot of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was uh, buying cars, flipping cars, and then mm -hmm. they were taking my cars away, like mm -hmm. my money, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then the old gang members, like, you know, mm -hmm. one time I got put, they put in a gun on me. Mm -hmm. you when know. you look for community support, would you say that our churches are able to give you the support you need? Oh, yes. As you navigate through? Yes, they, they help you out. They help you out. You know. Okay, okay. What can I help they provide? What, what, do they give, what do they do for you? They got showers. Okay. They give you food. Okay. Clothes. Okay. On, on Tuesdays, they give, they give you clothes. Okay. In terms of your health, how are you taking care of your health? being on the streets? Were you going to the doctor yourself? Did someone came to provide services for you on the streets? Someone was able to say, hey, you know, we're a mobile clinic. We're here yes, for you. Yes, at the church. There was a clean, uh, like a mobile truck. Okay. And they would do uh, like a physical, physical, uh, check a physical my, examination. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. They were good. They were good. Good. So. Okay. They they provided yeah. really good services mm -hmm. for you. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty good to know. Um. So as of today, do you think that homeless service providers are doing enough to help the community? Yes. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot. There's a, there's a okay. lot. Okay. Yeah. And what about? Did you ever face any challenges accessing services? Mm, not. Not. Any not problems? Really. People who did not wanted to help you out. Um, we're trying to understand the both sides of mm -hmm. of, of the situation. Sometimes I go to sometimes I used to go to the homeless centers, you know, to get a, to get help, and they would give me a, like a little bag with soaps and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. just that. so you, they'll give you personal items yeah, for your personal it, yeah. hygiene. Mm -hmm. um, so were you looking when when you were looking for help? Did you want it something more substantial? Yeah, yes. When it comes to getting help, are yeah. you looking for maybe a room per night mm -hmm. or maybe no. hotel services per one night? Yeah, I used to call this number for hotels, mm -hmm. and that was busy or call mm -hmm. next day at six in the morning. And okay, so I so to, you uh, so you feel that the services were not fully there? Mm -mm, yes. Okay. Okay. So. so they were not they were not what you were expecting. Yeah. Okay, I see. I mean, it's it, it's something that is is necessary to speak about, yeah. you know, because it's happening in our backyards, and I think that is is crucial for our audience to know, you know, and to try to understand yeah. the the homeless issue, especially in California, because we have so many individuals, yes. you know, facing uh, this type of situation on a, on a nightly basis. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to also. Um, Go deep. You were telling me um, that you have moved into permanent housing. Mm -hmm. That you do have an apartment now. Yes. Who helped you move into permanent housing? No, uh, I forgot the name. Is it like a home care? Center is it is it a, a Section Eight unit or what kind of what kind of program do you do you actually got into? Because I think it's just important for our viewers to to yeah. understand. I think it's a Section Eight, like a Section okay. Eight program. Okay. Yeah. And how does that work? How is that for you? Uh, 
you have to be like a, for a year, like a year at the place, and you okay. know, so okay. then, you, then you, they, they give you the voucher for Section Eight. Okay. What is your current rental payment? Oh, right now it's twenty nine dollars. Okay. Okay. It's that's good. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Interesting. That's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. And so you do have a roof over your head as of today. Yes. What about for your daily living? How are you surviving as of today? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you would say that your homeless situation has been resolved. Yes. Okay. Well, that's that's yeah. that's interesting because mm -hmm. I think you know most of our viewers who want to you yeah. know understand you know where to get services, mm -hmm. how to access services. I think it's important to have the the level of understanding yeah. in terms of if today any of us mm -hmm. are facing you know that type of situation, where can we go for the necessary services you know that that we all need? Because I think I, I honestly believe that. Um, you know, we need these services, not not so much for ourselves, but for mm -hmm. the community that we... Yeah, there's a lot of places you can go to. There's a lot okay. of churches that mm -hmm. give you food and they help mm -hmm. you out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. they got, like, free haircuts mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff, so... So what you're presenting is that there's a lot of support mm -hmm. in the community. There, there, there's a lot, yeah. There's a lot of support. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's pretty, a lot of them, yeah. That's pretty good to know. Um, so now would you say that you are still emotionally affected by the many years of homelessness? Did you ever seek therapy? Did you always, did you always wanted to go speak to a therapist, a psychiatrist? Oh, yeah, um, yes. Okay. Uh, I was speaking to a therapist, yeah. Uh -huh. And how was that for you? It was, it's good. Okay. It helped me a lot. Okay, you felt that it yeah. helped you. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. good. That's pretty yeah. good. So today you are a better person than you were three years ago. Oh, yeah, I was depressed. I was like, mm -hmm, just. Mm -hmm. So you faced depression in, oh, yeah. in, in, in that time. So, um, so today you have been able to manage. Yeah. And you're doing much better, better now, yes. which is, which is they, really good. They helped me a lot, so. Which is really good, really excellent. That means that um, some way, somehow, the services that we do have in the community, they're working for you. Yes. And, 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 you know, for all of those seeking those services. Mm -hmm. Which is, I think, it's it's really it's really great. Yes. Okay. So you were telling me that um, if an individual was facing homelessness today, what would you recommend that individual to do? How would you advise that individual? Or what would you say to that individual today? Just go to those churches and you get help. They, there's a lot of help there. They'll help you out. Mm -hmm. You just need to go there and get help. You know, and you get, get, help, get yeah. all the help you need. Yeah. Okay. Well, that will give it to you. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's interesting too. Yeah. Um, you know, to to know mm -hmm. because I think that a lot of our of our of our providers do not have um, mm -hmm. the the leverage to say I could go here, I could go there. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Martin, for for your, your insightful um, mm -hmm. information. You know, like I said, it's not only insightful for our mm -hmm. viewers, but it's also insightful for us. As we near the end of our show, we will be joined by both uh, of today's guests to reflect on this topic and what they think the future could look like. But for now. We will take a quick break. We'll be back. You're watching On Point. People ask how your children learn how to ride a bike, and you didn't. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves, and all I had to do was be there. Welcome back. I am here again with our guests, Martin and Marnie, to wrap up discussion regarding the homeless crisis in Southern California. Before we get into this discussion with our two guests, last week a group of students held a clothing drive here on campus for a local homeless shelter. A report, Warren Lopez, went out to cover the event. Let's take a look. Windbreaker. Windbreaker. Another windbreaker. Stacks of garments line the bench as these students prepare them for those in need. Right by Sierra Tower at CSUN was an Earth Day clothing drive, an event run by CSUN students. It was not only a chance for university students to recycle old clothing, it was also an opportunity to give those who are unhoused in Los Angeles. One of the goals of the event is definitely just giving back to the community and like the homeless. And it's, it's a clothing drive, so we want to donate as much clothes as we can get from other people. What began as a student project for a communications class became an effort to help those less fortunate. The group worked with the Los Angeles Homeless Shelter and nonprofit Union Rescue Mission to supply the organization with more clothing for its residents. For student Nicole Galvez, this was a chance for her and her crew to aid one of Southern California's biggest homeless populations. The fact that they're located and based on Skid Row, which is a very big, um, street that has homelessness and it has um, a lot of people unfortunately with no homes living there so we decided that would be a good idea to start. 
Their efforts are not just helping those less fortunate. It was also to aid the nonprofit in times where it didn't have the supplies and resources needed. The group's task leader, Adam Lewinberg, said it's not only a chance to create an impact for the community, it was also a call to help. Uh, it's not for me, it's, it's not for us. We want them to be comfortable and to have the opportunity to cover themselves and to dress appropriately for the weather and to at least make their situation a tiny bit better being exposed to the elements in Los Angeles. Reporting in Northridge for On Point, I'm Warren Lopez. So as you guys, uh, you know, notice, so there's, there's an agency who is providing homeless services, you know, as many various agencies in the community. From the uh, report that we just saw from a reporter, what are your thoughts on what was presented to you guys? I just want to hear your, your input. I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's amazing because you're giving people clean clothes. You're giving them, like, clothes that they're not having to go fish out of a dumpster. You're giving them, you know, the feeling of importance again. And um, you're bringing awareness. You're bringing awareness to a real problem, and it's not... You'd be surprised that although, yes, they're donating to, you know, the Union Rescue Mission, you'd be surprised how many students are actually facing homelessness while attending the university. So the fact that the university took it upon themselves to create this event and bring more awareness is awesome. Martin, what would you say will be a response to the video we, we showed you in terms of, of the services that we have? That's good. Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty good to have that leverage mm -hmm. to provide, you know, an outlet you know, whether you're a student or not, you know. I, I think that uh, we're all facing, you know, the same issues in our society. You know, they, they used to say that we're one page, paycheck away. I say it all from the time. Being, from being homeless. Yeah. It's the yeah. truth. You know, so it's great that we have all of these agencies trying to do something for, for our community, you know. I wish that, that, that we, could, we could have more, more individuals uh, in the community and more agencies coming together to, to actually address the issue as much as, as we can. You know, any, any final thoughts um, from you, especially, Marnie, as you are a service provider in the community? Um, you know, what would be some of the things that you would like to see as a service provider in the community? What, what, what would you think would benefit our, our, our homeless population? Being kind. Mm -hmm. um, being more open to shelters opening up within your community. Um, realizing that this is an actual humanitarian national crisis. It's not just an L.A. County, L.A. City. It's not just a California issue. It is nationwide, worldwide, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, bringing more awareness in the light and not putting people down like, oh, you choose to be homeless. Mm -hmm. Nobody chooses to be homeless. Mm -hmm. Understanding that addiction is not one of the leading reasons for homelessness. Homelessness actually leads to addiction to numb out the pain, to have the survival skills and being aware and having to stay up all night because you're scared for your life. Really understanding that those who are experiencing homelessness are still people. Thank you so much. That's all we have for you guys today. I want to thank Martin and Martin for joining us and giving us their take on homelessness. And thank you to the viewers of today's episode. You're watching On Point.